We're going to talk about Teddy Roosevelt today. So before we do that, we have to talk about um, William McKinley. So, William McKinley was the 25th president, Republican, from 1896. So, he serves his first term in 1896 to 1900, gets re-elected in 1900, but a couple months after that, goes to the Buffalo Convention, remember this? The anarchist, there is no God, shoots him twice and kills William McKinley in 1901. So, that means... So Teddy Roosevelt was McKinley's vice president. Which means when McKinley dies, Roosevelt becomes the 26th president. In 1901, and then gets re-elected in 1904 to his own second term. So he serves from 1901 to 1908. Also a Republican. I'm going to switch markers. So Teddy Roosevelt. All the Republicans after um, Abraham Lincoln had been like log cabin presidents, born very poor in a log cabin, worked their way up, you know, rags to riches, the American dream, and had done it on their own strength and hard work. Teddy Roosevelt kind of breaks that mold. He was born in New York, very rich, uh, very spoiled, and he was a little, he was asthmatic, so he had to stay home. And so he ended up getting an education similarly to um, Thomas Jefferson, right? About his father's land. He learned about nature. He learned about um, shooting, marksmanship, and um, taxidermy, which is like stuffing animals. You know? He was really good. He was a really good taxidermist. And also cartography. He was really good at drawing maps, reading maps, knowing where he was. Okay. Um, and he was also a historian. He would read a lot of history books and ended up writing a history of America that was used as a textbook for a long time. And a history of the Naval War of, the, War of 1812. Teddy Roosevelt, let's see, uh, and then his dad, it kind of instilled in him this idea of being a man, right? Um, I'm sorry you're asthmatic, but you need to get up, be a man, and work out anyway. So Teddy's dad built him a gym, and Teddy ended up being a boxer and a fighter and had this idea of being a manly man, right? Then he falls in love with the beautiful... Alice Lee, and marries her in 1880. Well, two years later, 1882, Teddy's dad dies. Two years after that, February 12th, 1884, Teddy's mom dies. Two days after that, like his mom had not even been removed from their house. Valentine's Day, February 14th, 1884. Not only does Alice Lee die, but their only daughter dies too. So Teddy is so distraught over all this death and just sadness in his life that he has to get out of New York. He, so he goes to what he calls the Badlands, the Wild West, right? And uh, that's what we had talked about with um, his confrontation with the guy who called him Four Eyes in the saloon, and he had to track down the bad guy who stole his canoe and um, chase down the outlaws. And in the Wild West, remember, you had to prove yourself based on what you could do. If you can hack it, they'll, they'll give you your respect. 
So Teddy Roosevelt was able to go out, be a cowboy, um, use his skills he had learned about nature to be a great cowboy and, and do his work. And he said it humbled him. He was no longer this like rich, spoiled um, little white boy from New York. He had to hang with the cowboys and earn his peace. And it made him think about the life of everyday Americans, which is going to get important. So he goes off to the Badlands, and he returns, and he marries a new pretty lady named Edith. And um, they love each other. They have six kids. And Teddy Roosevelt is president. So, um, meanwhile, um, let's remember the Monroe Doctrine, okay? Monroe Doctrine said that all the European powers have to stay out of North America and South America. This is the U.S.'s territory, basically, right? Well, meanwhile, at this time, uh, Europe is realizing that between North America and South America is this tiny stretch of land, a country called Panama. And remember, um, the, uh, Americans have been on this quest for the Northwest Passage or a water route between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean since the 1400s. And so really, Europeans started realizing Oh, there's only 48 miles between the Caribbean Sea, which leads to the Atlantic, and the Pacific Ocean right here. So they would put a boat, traipse their goods across Panama, and then have another boat waiting. And so many European powers were doing this. They were making the Panam Panama people really angry. And Teddy Roosevelt, what he said is, you should speak softly and carry a big stick. which kind of meant um, you don't need to talk a lot of smack about your enemies, right? But just have the army and the navy to back you up in case you have to go to war. So the America right now had the largest army, second largest navy, only to England, right? And Teddy was able to convince the European powers to run away. Like, listen, this is our turf, kind of like the Monroe Doctrine had said. So Teddy builds a canal, Panama Canal, to cover this territory. So for the first time, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are connected by a waterway and you can transport goods via ship from ocean to ocean. And America's got almost exclusive rights to this right now. Okay. Excuse me. Meanwhile in America, Meanwhile in America, we've got factories. And your little textbook uh, excerpts talked about assembly lines. Okay, so one person makes one piece all day. The next person adds another piece all day. The next person does the third piece all day. And so what it does is makes the whole process a lot more effective. For instance, you might have um, a lady working. You might have a baby working. You might have 